About a year ago here on Bipolar Waking Up, I set a goal for myself, and that goal was to put together the entire puzzle of bipolar disorder one video at a time. And as I've done over 10 theory videos on bipolar disorder, I thought it might be a good time to take a look at each of those pieces that I've created and start to put them together so that you can see the bigger picture. And as I talk about one video after another, I've provided links so that if you want to get into more details and see one video in particular, you can do so. Now, while I have made one video on depression so far, my focus really has been on the mania side, particularly the acute psychosis or period of insanity that can happen to people when they're in a state of mania. Now, as many of you are aware, these states of acute psychosis are considered incurable by psychiatry and will require a lifetime of medication. However, it's my opinion that these episodes are deeply misunderstood by psychiatry and that they in fact can be healed. In fact, I've healed from one myself, and that's what my story, Am I Bipolar or Waking Up, was all about. Then, after realizing that so many of you had had experiences so similar to my own, I thought I would share the theories of transpersonal psychologists, especially Dr. Stan Groff and Dr. John Weir Perry. Both of these doctors had spent a lifetime healing mental illness, not medicating it. So with my first theory video, I thought I'd tackle how these acute psychoses start in the first place. And as opposed to psychiatry, which tells you that you've got a chemical imbalance and that was the cause, I put forward the idea that I've learned from these doctors and has reflected my own experience, which is that an acute psychosis starts with a collapse of the ego. So in the video, The Real Cause of Bipolar Disorder, I start out by explaining what exactly an ego is, and it's quite different than most mainstream psychiatrists and psychologists lead you to believe. And so it's here that I'd introduce the idea that the ego is the false self. It's who you think you are, but you're not. And the analogy I give is that it's as if you're a baby chick that thinks you are the eggshell. You're not the eggshell. The eggshell is there to protect you and, and help you grow. But at some point, the eggshell becomes limiting and you need to break out of it. Now, once into an acute psychosis, the experience can be quite fearful and disturbing for the person. However, what's rarely talked about among psychiatry or psychologists is that there are many experiences that are deeply spiritual. So in the video, Is Bipolar Mania Spiritual Enlightenment? I start to compare the experience of being in psychosis with the experience that many Buddhist monks have of actually achieving enlightenment. And as you'll see, there are many parallels, including feelings of timelessness and a oneness or connection with the universe, a feeling of being tested by God or even being God. All of this can be present in a psychosis, and this can be present in experiences of enlightenment as well. And then in part two of his bipolar mania spiritual enlightenment, I go on to explain how the complex inner feelings and thoughts that we have while in psychosis, as sacred as they can be sometimes, often motivate us to act very strangely. And because we behave so strangely and often are very uncooperative, the people around us, especially our families, the parents, and police, don't treat us with the love and compassion that we need to get through this process. Rather, they treat us like problems that need to be solved and silenced. Then, in the video, Why We're Bipolar Normal Life Sucks, I start to take a deeper look at the underlying causes of bipolar disorder, such as the emotional issues that surface during the psychosis. And what we find initially is that while the psychosis does start with a collapse of the ego, it does so because your psyche is attempting to resolve a tension that exists between who you really are, your soul or true self, and who you think you need to be in order to survive in this world, your false self or ego. Because of this inner tension, many bipolar people have this feeling that they don't really have bipolar disorder, but that they have I can't be me disorder. So, in order to resolve this tension between the soul and the ego, the first thing that has to happen is that we need to start allowing our periods of acute psychosis to play themselves out in safe environments. Unfortunately, as we all know in our society today, we're not allowed to enter into these periods of psychosis because we see no value in them. In fact, according to psychiatry, being in psychosis can actually cause brain damage, and they say this without having any scientific proof of that whatsoever. So, in the video, How to Heal Bipolar Mania, I discuss the value of such experiences and how they can lead to spiritual breakthroughs for people that make it through the experiences successfully. 
Then, starting in 2009, I began to outline in detail the exact experiences which in fact do heal if someone is allowed to enter into the psychotic process in a supportive environment. In Traumas, Repressions, and the Healing of Bipolar Disorder, I outline how various traumas and repressed feelings from adulthood, childhood, and even our birth process are relived and healed during psychosis. I also discuss very otherworldly experiences such as feeling connected to the cosmos and sensations from other cultures, times, and places, which also have strong emotionally healing significance. In Family Secrets and the Healing of Bipolar Disorder, I talk about how the untold truths of our lives and our family relationships are part of the underlying problems that cause our disorder. Of particular focus is the cold hard parenting that many of us grow up with, and this style of parenting leaves us with the feeling of having an inner void that we seek to fulfill within our daily life. Then, in Aggression, Suicide, and the Healing of Bipolar Disorder, I talk about how these often violent and destructive feelings can come up in a manic episode as well, especially when they're connected to the traumas and repressions and family secrets I've already talked about. However, after doing extensive online research with bipolar people, I believe that much like the other traumas, repressions, etc., the feelings of anger and the, the violent feelings need to be worked through in psychosis as well, and that in fact these feelings usually become much worse once a person's in contact with psychiatry. And as you'll see when you watch the video, that it certainly seems like the psychiatric approach to labeling people mentally ill and medicating them for life appears to be causing more suicides than it's preventing. Now, if everything I've set up to now is true, why is it that so few people have this understanding of bipolar disorder? Well, the answer to that is, we are still evolving. In part one of my series on bipolar disorder and consciousness, I introduced the idea that from the beginning of history we have been gradually evolving through different levels of consciousness laid out in a theory called spiral dynamics. And in part one of the series I introduced the theory describing each level of consciousness one at a time. Then in part two of the series I provide some specific examples of different people at different levels of consciousness and then I'm able to make a comparison between the people at a higher level of consciousness who are able to heal their bipolar disorder as compared to those at lower levels that usually fall victim to the psychiatric system which is at the lower modern level of consciousness. And the key point I make in the video is that according to psychiatry and our modern level of consciousness the only things that are real are what can be measured and as a result, when they look for the source of a problem or a disorder, they need to look at the human being as an entirely biological organism. Now mainstream psychiatry continues to hang on to this materialist belief system despite a number of problems with their theory, and the biggest problem of which is that some people heal from their disorder. And many of these people not only heal, but they consider it a breakthrough in their lives and are grateful for the experience. And for those who do heal, the message they send back for the rest of us is very clear. This acute psychosis is a spiritual experience. And so in order to have a true breakthrough while you're in psychosis, you need to approach the psychosis as a spiritually healing process which requires a higher level of consciousness. And what's even more exciting here is that people who are not really psychologically prepared to go through this process alone can have breakthroughs if they're properly supported. And to support an episode properly, you need to follow the advice of Power of Now author Eckhart Tolle and simply be in the present moment. And in part three of my series on bipolar disorder and consciousness, that's where I talk about how you support somebody by simply being with them as opposed to doing something to them when they're in an acute psychosis. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that so far I've put together a pretty big part of this puzzle, but I'm not done yet. So what I want to do is tell you what I've got in store for future videos. Well, first, in a sense, I feel like I haven't even told you half the story. I still need to talk about the meaning and causes of delusions, hallucinations, and those ever-present synchronicities that so many of us seem to experience while we're in psychosis. I need to do a real good job on the subject of paranoia because it's such an important subject and can really get in the way of the healing, so I'll be asking my friends at New Light Beings to help me out with that one. 
I want to show you guys a model I've come up with, which I think does a good job of describing the difference between spiritual emergencies, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. I haven't even mentioned what I feel is behind this huge surge in bipolar disorder cases, especially among the young. And perhaps most importantly, I haven't said a word about what I know many of my subscribers are already feeling, that this surge in bipolar disorder is a part of our global spiritual evolution, and that those of you who are suffering at the hands of psychiatry today could be the pioneers of a whole new culture, a whole new society, a whole new way of being for all of us. But before I can even start to discuss any of those topics, we need to take a step back, right back to the very beginning. 